think what the world really needs is another magic box that makes things. Welcome back to Cloud 42, I'm James. And welcome to the Cloud 42 print farm. This is a part of the facility you don't often get to see. We're up here today because we're testing a new 3D printer. This is the Chidi Tech XCF Pro. You'll probably remember about six months ago, I tested its big brother, the iFast, which is sitting right over there. The iFast has been a really great printer. It's kind of become my go-to printer for almost everything I do. So when Chidi Tech reached out to me and asked if I'd like to have a look at the XCF Pro, I said, yes, of course. This is the Chidi Tech XCF Pro. This printer is targeted specifically at printing carbon fiber nylon and other abrasive reinforced and high temperature materials. It does come with a second extruder that has a PTFE liner and a brass nozzle specifically for, you know, ABS, PETG, PLA, and other easier to print materials. But the sweet spot for this printer really is the carbon fiber nylon. It has a fully enclosed build chamber. It's not heated. It just has a heated bed and the rest of the chamber, you know, warms up passively. It does have a vent fan in the back. It has a magnetic spring steel build plate that is, uh, has a PEI pebbled surface on it. And that PEI surface is actually double sided. So you can pull the plate off, flip it over, and you have two sides to work with. The mechanical structure of the printer has a gantry with the head on it and two vertical rails to move the bed up and down. This does use ball bearing linear rails for all the axes and what look like multi-start nylon nut lead screws for Z. It does use mechanical limit switches, one on each side of the Z axis, presumably to keep the two screws in sync, and then one each on the X and Y axes. The single extruder does have a BL touch bed leveling probe in addition to the cooling fan for the extruder and a cooling fan for the print. This one has the hardened nozzle installed for abrasive filaments, but as I said, there's a second extruder that comes with the printer that has the brass nozzle for other filaments. Now, even though this does have a bed leveling probe, it still has the three point leveling nuts for manually leveling the bed. And since you have to manually level anyway, I'm not really sure what value is being added by the touch leveling probe. Up top, we have a magnetically attached cover that covers the feed path. In this case, I've got a dry box and a PTFE tube to guide the filament down to the extruder without exposing it to humidity in the air. Power buttons up on top along with the USB. I like this location for the USB flash stick. It's much better than the port on the front of the iFast that's easy to hit and break off. Speaking of the iFast, the XCF Pro is quite a bit smaller physically than its big brother. This is for a few reasons. One is because of the smaller build plate at 300 by 250 millimeters. Another is because it only has a single extruder, so it doesn't have to account for the extra width on the gantry so that both nozzles can reach the entire plate. And the iFast having a heated chamber also has interior plastic panels that take up more space than the Spartan interior on the XCF Pro. Now, one thing they really improved versus the iFast is this magnetic cover. On the iFast, it's set down in a groove, which makes it hard to grasp. On the XCF Pro, it's not in a groove, it's just held by magnets, so it just slides right off. That is a huge quality of life improvement. I cannot tell you how much better that makes it. Of course, the XCF Pro has the BL Touch bed leveling probe, which is something that the iFast doesn't have. The iFast does have a camera in it, and there is no camera in the XCF Pro, though the camera in the iFast honestly is kind of a joke. I never use it. The five inch touch screen is crisp and clear and bright and responsive. Of course, you can go through the files, you can see previews and start prints, though I usually do it from the Cheaty Print software. Under the tools menu, we have all of the things you would expect. We have manual controls so you can drive the gantry and the build plate around. We have bed leveling. They have the fast leveling and normal leveling. We'll look at the leveling here in a minute. You can also turn the auto bed leveling on and off for what it's worth. You can preheat the extruder and the build plate. You can change filament here. You just click to heat up the nozzle. And once it's hot, you can drive the filament forward and back again, turn the filament sensor on and off for loading filament into the printer. 
have our internet settings so you can connect it with Wi-Fi. There's also a network cable on the back. You can manually control the fans. Don't know exactly why you would need to do that, but you can if you want to. Under the system menu, you can look at basic information like temperatures and location. You can change the localization language. I speak English, so I'll reconfirm that. Factory reset the thing. You can turn the sound on and off. You can turn the LED light on and off. This printer does make a lot of sound. When it is homing, it just beeps and beeps and beeps. It is amazing how many beeps this thing emits. You can take the cover off the extruder by removing four thumb screws, but to be honest, once you got the cover off, there's not a lot to see. This is packaged really densely. You can see the ribbon cable comes around the side. There's a little PC board to plug in everything. You've got the heater, you got the temperature sensor, the touch probe, the cooling fans, and not much else to see here. This does have a dual gear drive extruder, but it's all up inside where you can't see it or get at it without disassembling it further. If you select the normal bed leveling process from the touch screen, it gives you detailed instructions and it drives the extruder to each of the adjustment knobs and parks it right over the bed. There is a leveling shim that's included with the printer and you just feel underneath the nozzle to get it to the point where the shim just drags. And then you step through and it goes over all three of the adjustment locations and lets you adjust each of those and then it moves to the center of the bed and lets you adjust the overall Z height there. Then it activates the touch probe and it probes 20 points on the bed, presumably to create a matrix to automatically level during printing, but I could never get it to actually do that. I could never see the Z screws moving during printing, no matter what I did. It just displays the results of the probing on the screen and tells you that the automatic leveling was successful. I actually went back in and tried unleveling the bed by turning one of these knobs a full turn and running the entire cycle again, just ignoring the probing with the paper. And all it did was probe the bed and tell me that the auto leveling had failed because the error value was too large. I'm told it's supposed to compensate for the actual level of the bed during printing, but I could never get it to do it. But it really doesn't matter because the three-point bed leveling works fine and it stays put, so I think that's good enough. Chitty Tech has vastly improved the design of the dry boxes since I got my eye fast. The new box is just a plastic case that holds a roll of filament and has a PTFE tube integrated to feed to the extruder. And then there's a pocket off the side of the case to hold a package of desiccant. This is way better than the boxes that came with the iFast where the desiccant would interfere with the filament because it was just sort of in the bottom and there wasn't really room for it and the spool. You just feed the filament through the tube, drop the roll in here. There are spacers if you're using a narrow roll and then the lid has gaskets that seal around the box. So you put the lid on and it's completely isolated from air. So humidity cannot get to the filament. Now the big win with this design is that the normal spool holder just fits right through the center of the dry box. It has little tabs that lock it to keep it from rotating. And you can just go mount this on the printer just like a normal spool of filament. And you don't have to have room for the dry box to stick out the back. Now, in this case, I'm not using the optional filament out detector, which would be in that channel on the back of the printer. So I'm just running the PTFE tube all the way through, all the way up to the extruder, feeding it in, and then locking the tube into the little push to connect fitting on the top of the extruder. This is the software that Chidi Tech provides with all of their printers. We looked at this previously when we were looking at the iFast. And this appears to just be a reskinned version of Cura and Honestly, it's pretty good. This does everything that I need. I also have a Simplify 3D license, but with these Chidi printers, I've just never felt the need to use it because the software they provide works great. Now, I wish they would sign their executables, but that would really that would really fix the one remaining problem that I have with this. But in general, it works great. They provide it on a flash disk with the printer. You install it on your machine, and then it has uh, automatic checks for updates built in. Now I just grabbed this part and dragged it in here 
and you can you know move it around you can rotate you can pick a surface that you want to say i want to stick this one to the bed and it'll rotate it automatically for that all this stuff works great over here on the right you choose which printer you want and they have profiles for all of their printers i of course have the xcf pro selected and then underneath here it has a list of printers that it's found on the local network and in this case it found the XCF Pro and that is selected. Then you have profiles. The default profile is this 0.2 millimeter fine. They have some other stuff in here and you can create your own. So once I have a set of settings that I like, I generally just make my own profile for that. Next, they have a set of material definitions and all the materials that they sell are in here. In particular, I've selected the PA-12 CF. They have their Ultra PA down here. I would really like to try that, but it is not available at the moment. I haven't been able to buy any. Then down below, we have the settings and you can tune this up or down. You can leave it in basic mode. So only a few things are visible. I generally run it on advanced. You can turn it all the way up and see all kinds of stuff that I've just never felt the need to modify. The settings in here are just all the usual, you know, your line width, retraction, flow rates, on the layer height, I have raised the layer height from 0.2 millimeters to 0.25. I find that with this PA-12 carbon fiber, it makes the prints stronger and it also makes them print faster. Both of those are things that I like. The surface texture of this particular filament hides the layer lines anyway, so it really doesn't matter. For infill, I'm running gyroid at 20%. I find for almost everything I do, that's great. I get a really rigid part that works well. I'll tune this if I have special needs, but most of the time this works fine. Print speed is set to 50 millimeters per second on this particular profile, and I find that to work fine as a general purpose setting. Of course, you can adjust temperatures. This material is at 280 Celsius. With the high temperature extruder, I believe you can go up to 350, which is pretty hot. It allows you to print a lot of nylon and other high temperature materials. With the low temperature extruder, it does have a PTFE liner. So that one can only go up to, I think, 240 is what they quote, which is sort of ABS temperatures. For support, I do have check generate support here. I find that that generally doesn't require much tweaking. The defaults work fine. For this part, I also want a raft. And the reason is because this surface here that's on the build plate, I want the texture of that to be similar to the texture of the surface that's on top of the support. And there's some other fancy settings down here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and click Slice. Now, once it's sliced, I can look at the layer view and I have selected to color based on line type so I can tell the difference between perimeters and infill and support. And this allows me to then just kind of look at what it's gonna do and make sure that that makes sense. And this looks pretty good. It is gonna generate support in these holes, which is not strictly necessary, but it looks like it's going to work fine. I am happy with that. So I can now just send this to Wi-Fi. You can save this onto a flash drive and take it to the printer. But in this case, since it found it on the network, I click send to Wi-Fi. It goes to the printer, pops up a dialog, asks me if I want to print it. I click OK. I'm not showing you that at the moment because the printer's busy printing something else. And I have found with some of their devices that messing with it over the network while it's printing is not a good idea. Of course, the printer doesn't actually print this fast. I believe this is a 15 times time lapse. Uh, this printer does have much better visibility than the iFast. I could actually point a camera through the front door and get this view, which again is way better than the iFast, which is almost impossible to see inside of while it's printing. Once the print's cool, they just easily pop right off the PEI sheet. They hold pretty well, but then the plate comes clean. I rarely even have to pull it out of the printer. The support material breaks away pretty easily and leaves a pretty clean surface. The material inside the holes is a little bit harder to remove, but if you have a pair of pliers with bent tips, you can kind of just crack it and push it out pretty easily. Let's take some measurements here and see what kind of accuracy we're getting. These are supposed to be 250 thou, so it looks like we're about nine thou over there. We're about six and a half over there. We're about 11 thou over there check the overall size of this thing. We're not over by quite as much there, so it's probably not just a horizontal expansion. There's probably an overall scaling factor that's needed. 
check the diameter of the holes. These are supposed to be 335. You can see that one's about 10 thou under, maybe a little less than 10 thou under. It's kind of tough to tell because these holes, because they're vertical, probably aren't round. I did some math and figured we probably need a negative 0.13 millimeter horizontal expansion. Let's go ahead and slice that and print it again. Two forty-eight. That's a thou and a half under. This side is two thou over, one thou over. This is pretty close. A thou and a half under. I will totally take that from a three D printer. Those are fantastic accuracy numbers. Overall, we're about five and a half under here. We probably need an overall scaling factor to scale it up slightly to account for shrinkage, but it's not much. Still about 5 thou under on the holes. That's going to be just fine. Next up, I'm going to print this 11 inch propeller. I chose this model because it's long and takes up a lot of the bed and also because there are no flat surfaces. Everything is printed on support. So this is a good example of something that will not sit flat on the bed. Actually printing, this worked really well. The support adhered really well to the bed. The thing came out flat. There was no peeling. Everything looked really clean. And of course, comes right off the bed. No problem at all. Just like everything else on this PEI sheet. I was a little bit concerned about being able to remove the support. It takes a little bit of force, but it comes right off. The underside of this that was against the support looks just a little bit fuzzy, but the top surface looks really good. If you were really gonna use this as a propeller, you'd wanna clean this up with a little sandpaper, but I think you probably could really use it. Let's throw it on a prop balancer and see how balanced it is. Okay, that's pretty impressive to get a 3D printed propeller right off the printer, perfectly balanced, but yeah. Pretty much any direction I turn it, it will just sit there. You can try it vertically. I tried it both ways. I tried it at 45 degree angles, both sides, and this thing is nice and smooth and balanced. To be honest, I'm a little bit shocked at just how balanced this thing is. I had no idea that I would get something that clean off of the printer. I mean, props that come out of injection molding systems aren't that clean. Next up, we'll take this gap test that I downloaded off of printables. The idea here is that it's got six different movable plungers in it, and each one has a different gap. I believe they start at 0.35 millimeters and go all the way down to 0.1 millimeters. The idea is that we'll print this and see if all of the plungers can rotate. If the printer is printing exactly on size, they should all be able to rotate, but I would expect that the smallest ones are still going to stick or at least require a lot of force or maybe break when we grab them with a pair of pliers and try to twist them. Right off the printer, this looks pretty good. I love the surface texture from this filament. It just looks so good. And the layer lines kind of disappear in the texture of it. I'm really happy with it. As it turns out, almost all of these were free right off of the printer. The two narrowest ones, I had to twist and crack them free, but once they're free, even down to 0.1 millimeter clearance, these things just move beautifully. You can see it is physically in contact. It's not loose at all, but it still rotates freely. That is really impressive. Let's try an old favorite. This is my two liter bottle cap, clamp, and holder system. This is for coolant on my CNC mill. The idea here is that there's a cap that fits into a two liter bottle. There is provision to run a pickup tube down into the bottle. And there are threads here that lock everything together and a clamp that allows you to hang the bottle up on the mill. We'll just go ahead and throw all of these parts on the bed and print them at once and see what we get. In general, printing multiple parts on this printer has gone really well. It's a real test of retraction settings sometimes to keep from stringing or getting little blobs on the outside of the parts. In general, this has just been great. The default retraction settings seems to work really well. And I get pretty good surface finish. You can see the artifacts on the outside layers where the extrusion starts and stops, but in general, they're pretty clean, definitely cleaner than any of the other printers that I own. So I think that's a win. You didn't see that. 
parts look pretty good and this filament is really really strong this is so much better than the nylon x that i tested previously the rigidity is good the hardness of the surface is good the creep characteristics are good I use this to print the motor mount for the electronic lead screw on my lathe, and it is still going strong. I really wasn't sure how that was going to turn out, but it's been fine. Creep has not been an issue at all. So these parts fit down in, and then the true test is to see, do the threads fit? I didn't do anything in the design to add additional clearance for the thread. So this is the specified, I believe it's a 14 millimeter thread right out of Fusion 360 printed with no compensation whatsoever, except for the uh, horizontal expansion that we established earlier to get the accuracy of the print. And it just threads right on. And that is just a beautiful fit. It comes down nice and snug. It slightly clamps the parts together, which is what it's designed to do to hold on to the pickup tube. And then the whole thing just fits in the mounting bracket. You didn't see that. I wanted to test something that had a little bit more surface area on the bed, so I dug through the archives and found this. This is a flash foot that I designed for my neighbor. He is a photographer, does a lot of architecture photography, and he needs to be able to mount an off-camera flash on a little foot so he can stick it in inconspicuous locations to provide a fill light. Now, I originally printed these in PETG for him, and they all ended up breaking because the material just was not strong enough here where the flash mounts, and it would ultimately just crack. I wanted to try this in the carbon fiber nylon, so this seemed like a perfect time to try it. Part of the reason I wanted to try printing a larger part is so that any bed leveling anomalies would become more evident, but this laid down nice and smooth. I really couldn't see any elephant's foot or any other artifacts that looked like there were any issues with the bed leveling. This just came out nice and clean, and as usual, just popped right off. I kind of expected the support removal to be really difficult with this stuff because it was with the Pet G, but it just popped right out. There was very little to it. The other thing that I'm really impressed with with this material is the rigidity. These things are rigid. I have never worked with a 3D printing material that's this rigid. I, it, it exceeds my expectations. I'm gonna be playing with this stuff for all kinds of applications in the future. All in all, I'm really impressed with this thing. I tried really hard to find something to hate about it. You know if you've seen the Adam Stack M4 laser review, I'm not above trashing a product. But I can't find anything I don't like. This thing just works. I just slice my models, send them to the printer over the network, and in fact, most of the time I don't even come up to check on it until it's done. I remember later, oh yeah, I was printing something. I come up here and the parts are just sitting on the bed. Now, I have only tested this with the Cheaty branded PA12 carbon fiber filament, and honestly, that's probably mostly what I'm going to run in this thing. If I want to run other filaments like ABS, I've got the iFast, which has the heated chamber, this one doesn't. And while the iFast can handle the carbon fiber filaments, and I've tested them there previously, it does require swapping to the other extruder with the hardened nozzle. And to be honest, swapping out the extruders on these things is kind of a pain. It's pretty quick to swap, but then you have to recalibrate everything, especially on the double extruder. So what I really wanted out of this machine is something that I can have set up for the PA12 carbon fiber, and I can just dump parts to it that I need in the shop, it's always set up, it's always ready to go, and I don't have to mess around with swapping filaments. And for that usage, this thing has just been amazing. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, give it a thumbs up, feel free to subscribe, and maybe consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Patrons can download CAD models and drawings for all the projects on the channel and get access to behind-the-scenes content that you can't get anywhere else. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.